Did you know that ranged champions deal 17% less damage to tower plates? So if you're playing Nico and trying to take a turret, you should turn into a melee champion to take plates faster. In this case, I'm doing 29 damage as Wukong instead of the 24 I was doing as Nico. And if you're playing someone like Jace, you can turn into melee form to take plates even faster as well. Did you know that you can use jungle plants on Yasuo to knock up enemies for your ult? It doesn't work if you just stand there and hit the plant while trying to ult, but it does work if you flash out of the blast range and then hit R. It probably won't happen very often, but it could potentially make for some pretty sick plays. Rengar actually has a split second of wiggle room when he's out of a bush where he can still jump, and it can help him get to things slightly out of his range. It's even possible for him to reach Baron from this bush here. With that being said, movement speed items would definitely help as well. Something else that's useful is the sponsor of today's video, Buff. Buff is an app authorized by Overwolf, a world-leading gaming app platform that allows you to earn money while playing games like League. And guys, it does not stop from there. You can also earn money from playing all of these games as well. All you have to do is download Buff, let it chill in the background, and you can earn Buff points from playing these games. It's that easy and it doesn't affect your gameplay at all. You can then use those buff points to buy RP and a bunch of other sick rewards too. Buff is completely safe to use and fun fact, they also just rebranded too, so make sure to check out their new setup and features like this new Discover tab where you can post your highlights recorded from Buff. That's right, Buff can automatically record your highlights when you play and then you can edit and share them to everyone else on Buff itself. It's pretty cool. Anyways, of course, the best thing about all of this is that Buff is 100% free to use, so make sure to download it using my link below. And thanks Buff for supporting the channel. All right, back to the video. If you're an esports fan, here's a map some one made that shows where each of the different servers and regions are located. It also shows what leagues there are and where they're from. It's pretty cool. There's exactly 0.25 seconds that you can take damage during a recall and still back, which is why sometimes it seems like your damage should have stopped them, but in reality, you probably just hit that very small window. If you ever see that someone is about to take your control ward, try dropping a new one right down before it dies, and that way they won't get the XP or gold from it. Of course, you'll probably end up chucking it in a really dumb place, but at least they won't get it too, right? If you go to the runes tab, there's a button where you can hide the preset set in default pages and that way you won't have like a billion room pages show up in champ select. It's pretty nice if you like to be more organized. Some of the laughs in League of Legends are the worst to listen to. <laughs> But luckily for us, there's a command that you can use to get rid of the laugh so you don't have to mute everything else too. Just type slash ignore and then at the champion name and then you'll be good to go. Apparently a lot of people didn't know this, but there's a chess tab in the champion select screen that tells you what champions are eligible for you to get a chess still. Sometimes you'll actually be surprised of how many you have left and it's actually pretty nice to see them all organized together. Here is a chart that shows the exact differences between cleanse and QSS. As you can see, everything is the same except for just a few things. Cleanse works on summoner spells and QSS doesn't, but QSS works on suppresses like Malzahar's ult, and it also works on Mord's ult when Cleanse doesn't. Have you ever wondered what exactly these hourglass timers meant on the minimap? Well, the gray one comes up one minute before the camp spawns, and the yellow one shows up 10 seconds before the camp or objective spawns. Nico's W isn't just good for deceiving people with their clone. It's also great for dodging targeted abilities like Darius's ultimate, for instance. If you W right before you get hit by it, you won't take any damage. You can also use the clone itself to block any other abilities like Nunu's snowball. Pretty handy. When Gwen is in her W, it shows a broken sword on the enemies nearby, even if Gwen's in a bush. So if you ever see this on you and know Gwen, she's probably in the bush next to you. And no, if you're wondering, you can't see Gwen's W on the other team if she's in a bush, so it really is pretty useful. In other words, she's not like Aurelian Soul. Sorry, dude, you're still on your own. Did you know that it's entirely possible to teleport Shaco boxes with Ryze's ultimate, which can actually lead to some pretty sick plays like this? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> When playing Gwen, did you know that you can E or flash during the middle of her Q animation, which means it's really easy to switch targets mid-fight. Did you know that Fiora's ultimate can actually heal Rift Herald if the Herald is sitting on top of it? It doesn't happen very often, but if it does, it could honestly be a game changer. If the Rift gets enough HP back, it'll have enough HP to do another charge, and over and over again. If you're enjoying, please poke that sub button, and of course, here's a uh, hedgehog. A hedgehog. When playing Bard, did you know that you can alt yourself right before you go on a magical journey, which can be really good for turret dives? The timing has to be very precise though, so be pretty careful. Did you know that if you click on a champion that just used Zonia's, you can actually see exactly how much time is left until they're out of it. This makes it way easier to time when you should use your abilities so you don't completely miss like usual. When someone teleports in front of you as Caitlyn or anyone else for that matter, always drop your trap right behind them because they'll always spawn a little bit closer to their nexus. They will not spawn right on top of a war or minion. Knowing exactly where they'll be gives you a perfect opportunity to CC them with an ability in general. Did you know that when Maokai's passive is ready, his left hand starts to glow? Here's a very brief and quick rundown on how vision score works. Your vision score is based on three main components. The first is ward lifetime provided. In other words, 
<clears throat> Each minute of ward lifetime you provide by placing wards will give you one point. The second is ward lifetime denied, which is whenever you get a ward takedown, you get one point for every minute of lifetime remaining on that ward. And the last is vision mechanics. This could be Ash's Hawkshot, for example, or Quinn's W. You'll also get more points depending on if you reveal anything with that ability. A Hawkshot that reveals their whole team doing Baron will give a lot more points than a Quinn W that reveals nothing. There's a lot more smaller details that go into it, but these are the basics. When jungling as Shaco, remember to place boxes after it hits 50 seconds in the game and not before. If you place boxes before 50 seconds, your first box will disappear before the raptors or other camps get to spawn. Also, if you didn't know, your boxes can pretty much take the raptors camps by themselves. Just place two down here and then one in the lane and then all you have to do is auto it once or twice and you'll be good to go. This can be a little tricky though, so you might want to practice and practice tool. You can instantly proc Mord's passive if you hit three people with one Q at once. Additionally, you can also hide Mordekaiser's ultimate animation pretty easily by using E and then Q first. When playing Wukong, instead of EQing, always make sure to QE because that way the combo is instant. And if you EQ, the animation is fairly delayed, at least compared to the other way around. I see a lot of people not doing this on EVE when trying to chase someone down, but don't be afraid to alt backwards to catch up to someone. You may not be able to get them with your alt damage, but you will at least get close enough to QE them. The next time you're playing Kindred and drop your ultimate in a fight, save your last E passive for once the alt ends to get the extra damage off to make sure you win the fight after your ultimate is gone. This combined with the collector can make sure you get a ton of damage down all with one shot. I feel like most people knew this, but Yi can dodge turret shots with his alpha strike. It's always the worst seeing this guy get away for free after straight up turret diving you. Also something you may not know is that Yi can now choose what direction he pops out of after the alpha strike. All he has to do is click in that direction and I'll pop out on that side. This may not seem like a huge change, but now Yi can cover a lot more ground after each alpha strike. He can easily point into the direction of another enemy so he's closer, and he can even pop out over some small walls now, which makes things even more interesting. Did you know that you can click on your champion HUD to center your camera? You can also by default hit the space bar, but I suppose if you're in a pinch and panic, this is always an option. Did you know that the cursor shows you when you're about to place a ward inside or outside a bush because a green circle will pop up? Also, if you're about to drop a ward somewhere that it will get moved after you release it, like terrain, a yellow circle will pop up instead. Did you know Garen will continue to do damage in his E even if he uses stopwatch or zonias? Stopwatch is a little more realistic, but I suppose zonias can be a thing too, I guess. If you ever spawn or respawn on ARAM and wonder why you can't buy, it's because sometimes the game spawns you outside the fountain. So all you have to do is move back into it a little and then you'll be able to buy. I have no idea why it does that, but you know, it's League. When playing Lilia, you can use Zonia's mid W and it will still get damage off. In fact, this works for every one of her abilities, her Q, her W, and her E. Did you know that after you reach level 150, you gain mythic essence every 50 levels? So if you're creeping up on that next milestone, you may get a little extra ward on the side. Did you know that after level 10, bots will start granting you less and less experience? There's also some extra penalties added on where it will drop even more if you play over 180 minutes each day. Something to keep in mind if you're making a new account. When playing Pike, you can actually use your E to hop over a lot bigger of a chunk of the wall than you think. You just have to get right outside of the bush here and then E across the wall. This will for sure probably catch some people off guard and it's way faster than walking all the way around. Did you know when playing Tom Kench, you can devour Nico when she's in the middle of her ultimate and her ultimate will still go off. It's honestly kind of crazy. And what's even crazier is you can even do this with Ryze's ultimate too. I feel like you can set up some pretty sick plays with this. When playing Zed, did you know that if the enemy is low enough health after Zed uses his ult, a shuriken will pop up, letting you know that they're low enough to execute. This is just like with Yone's E. It's kind of small, so it's a bit hard to see, but it's there and it will give you a good idea on if you need a follow up afterwards for the kill. Nico's W is actually perfect for manipulating the wave and setting up slow pushes for free. It'll gather the minions up for you and then cause them to target the same one. The best part is they do no damage to you and there's almost no risk in it for you as well. When playing Nautilus, you can auto and then queue at the very last second to stop your body from turning and giving away the direction you're hooking in. Something that even double lift is vulnerable to. Yo, the I'm Arn. I decided. Wow, Damn. he actually Arno did ulti. the f***ing auto queue. I've never died to that before. Wow. To instantly alt someone on Kane, try using blue smite and then ulting. It works pretty much every time. I don't know how useful this really is, but when playing Syndra, you can actually trap the scuttle crab behind your mid turret and it won't leave. I suppose this could actually be good if you were playing against a kindred and their mark came up on it. Also, this only works for the top side scuttle crab, so don't even bother trying with the bottom side one. If you're ever playing champions like Lulu, Lissandra, Nami, champions that you need to be able to directly click on yourself or someone else to work properly, know that you can actually go into the settings 
buttons and set keys for each of those abilities to go off instantly without having to click anything. That way you don't have to panic every time trying to click yourself hoping you don't misclick and hit someone else instead. Just go into the settings, find self cast for self cast abilities, and then put in the key you'd like to use. Now you don't have to worry at all about aiming and you can just click for your guaranteed self alt. This is OP.GG's multi search tool. You can copy and paste champion names once you get into a match and it'll load them all together instead of individually having to type each one in. If you're actually serious about climbing in rank, here are a few quick tips. First, if you lose multiple games in a row, take a break. Not a huge break because you don't want to get cool, but like a 15 to 20 minute break. Right themselves said that taking a break and recentering yourself from the tilt from your last games can increase your win rate by up to 10 to 15 percent. Alternatively, if you win multiple games in a row, it works the same way around. Your win rate significantly increases off of multiple wins. So in other words, if you're winning, keep playing. And if you're not, take a break and then reset. People always say mute all too, but there was actually a study done a while ago that showed that teams who got along and had no one in the game who raged or said some dumb, stupid things won 54% of the time. And what's crazy is that win rate dropped all the way down to a 46% win rate with only three people who flamed. It got even lower after that. And the data didn't end from there. Wright said that the players who got honored regularly had a 10% higher win rate. And the players who were reported frequently had an average of a 35% win rate. So if you really want to climb, seriously slash mute all. And lastly, if you want to win, try just being better. Make sure to send any useful tips you got to outsidejoke, lol at gmail.com, and thanks for watching. A thick shout out to my tier 3 patrons, Stefan Noctak and Jameson. Thank you so much for my other patrons as well. All right, bye.